Well, hello, and it's lovely to welcome you to our daily service today as we continue to consider this season of Advent in the run-up to Christmas. As we begin, I'm going to read uh, the Lord Jesus speaking to us, testifying to who, to who he is. Verse from Revelation chapter 1. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead. And now look... I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Father God, we praise you for your Son, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the one who was dead but who is now alive forever and ever. And we pray that as we move through this season and the preparation for Christmas, celebrating his birth. We pray that you might give us eyes to see his risen, victorious sonship now at your right hand in heaven. Give us eyes to see his inevitable return. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, why don't we all join in with the prayer that the Lord Jesus taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Well, we're, we're in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and chapter 5 this week. Paul reassuring that church in Thessalonica about their brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep. Today we move into looking at verses um, 1 to 3 of, of chapter 5. And I'm going to read those verses and also a verse that's just before that. So from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety... Destruction will come on them suddenly as labour pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. Paul helping the church in Thessalonica to understand about times and dates we do not need to tell you. Because no one knows when the Lord Jesus is going to return. So you don't need to concern yourself about the exact month, the exact day, the exact year. Of course, for 2,000 years, people have been concerning themselves about that very fact and making all sorts of bold assertions about the end of the world and the Lord Jesus return. And Jesus says himself in Matthew 24, and Paul says here, you don't need to worry because you don't know. Actually, the, the metaphor that Jesus uses, or the metaphor that Paul uses here, a thief in the night is exactly the same metaphor that Jesus uses in Matthew 24. Actually a metaphor that I spoke about as it happens last week in one of the daily services. Paul reuses the metaphor here in these verses. But the use is quite different. You see back in Matthew 24, Jesus says, look, look my return is going to be like a thief in the night. You don't know when I'm going to return. Just like you don't know when a thief is going to enter into the house and steal your valuables. So you always need to be prepared. The lock always needs to be locked on your front door. You always need to make sure that your windows are closed. You always need to make sure that your burglar alarm is set because you don't know. So always be prepared. I could come back at any time. Here, though, Paul uses the metaphor very differently. Instead of telling us as believers to be prepared, be ready for the Lord Jesus' return, Paul says, here's the thing. Lots of people, they won't be ready. They won't be expectant. Jesus' return will be like a thief because many people won't ever have expected it to happen and will be tragically surprised when it does. Now instead what people will be doing is saying peace, prosperity, which is what our world does, isn't it? 
either because it's longing for peace or prosperity it's looking for, or it's enjoying supposed peace and prosperity. Our world shouts out peace and prosperity. And no one will be expecting it when that peace and prosperity is brought to a very sharp end by the Lord Jesus' return. It's always been like this, but increasingly so in the world in which we live. People have eyes for nothing but what's straight in front of them. The material, the physical, the immediate concern. And people may or may not believe in some sort of transcendent, higher realm, some supernatural, spiritual realm. They may or may not believe in God. They may or may not believe in the God as revealed in the Christian scriptures. But they don't live as if that reality has any impact on life today. I may believe in God, but he doesn't affect my everyday, my decisions and my priorities. Our eyes are fixed in front of us instead of looking upwards. But more than that, people today don't fix their eyes forwards to what is coming. People don't fix their eyes forwards to the inevitability of the Lord Jesus' return because he died and was raised and holds the keys of death and life because one day he will judge the world as appointed by his father it is inevitable that he will return but people in our day and age as has always been the case keep their eyes fixed in front of them on immediate concerns instead of looking up instead of looking forwards but it doesn't matter where people are looking because Jesus is still going to come back and when it does Paul says the other metaphor he uses is as labour pains on a pregnant woman. Labour pains, contractions on a pregnant woman are both sudden, Jesus' return will be like that, very sudden, and inescapable. There's nothing a woman going through labour can do to avoid the contractions. And so it will be for many whose eyes are fixed in front of them, Jesus' return will be sudden and tragically inescapable. in labour wonderfully from that pain comes life comes birth but in this labour from the pain comes not life but in Paul's language verse 3 while people are saying peace and safety destruction will come on them suddenly it's been a help to me to prepare these daily services and advent because often we think of the Christmas period as sweet and fluffy, full of joy and light and gladness. And it is that, it is definitely that. But Advent adds another element in. The Christmas period, the Advent season, is desperately serious. Many will have their eyes fixed in front. And many will have destruction come upon them because they weren't ready for their king's return. Of course, the reality is that that is what we are like if we call ourselves Christian believers too. Forgetting to look up, forgetting to look for, just looking in front of us. And so it's right that we pray a prayer confessing that to the Lord, that we forget about him, we forget about his son's return. Let's do that together now before we move into a time of prayer. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have wandered and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things that we ought to have done. And we have done those things that we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy upon us sinners. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises declared to mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a disciplined, righteous and godly life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Father, we praise you for complete and full forgiveness in our Saviour, the Lord Jesus, that we can pray a prayer of confession knowing that is true. And Father, as we think about this world desperate for peace and prosperity, we recognise that those are good things to long for and want. 
And so we do this morning, or whenever we're watching, we do pray for those things, for this world. How this world needs peace, where conflict has torn it apart in various parts of the globe. And so we pray for governments who are not serving their people, but damaging their people. How we pray for groups who are intent on using violence in order to accomplish their purposes. And Lord Jesus, as the Prince of Peace, we pray for peace. And Almighty God, we think of the terrible impacts that COVID has had and is having and will have on the global economic picture. And those who are most vulnerable, the poorest across the world, in the majority world and elsewhere, who will suffer the most, whether it's in the UK or Europe or US or abroad or wherever it might be. And Father, we pray that you might protect those who are most vulnerable. And we pray that you might restore global travel and a flourishing global economy. Once again, please, would the vaccine, would other things with COVID mean that this time is soon in memory? But even as we pray for those things, almighty God, we recognise that peace and prosperity will only be found on the other side of the Lord Jesus' return. And so we pray that your world might wake up to your son's return. Stop saying peace and prosperity and looking in front of them and look forward and look up. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Well, our hope for peace and prosperity is ultimately in the coming of Emmanuel. And we're going to sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Oh, 
Thank you so much for joining us. Our final prayer as we close. We will be caught up and meet the Lord in the air. And this Advent season, that is our prayer, Father God, that we might meet our Saviour and our King. We pray, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Amen.